In this video, I want to talk about using the NWS grids or the NWS graphical forecasting tool, right? And so NWS stands for the National Weather Service, and they basically have built something. Um, I'll make this a little bigger. There we go. They've actually built something um, which helps amateur people who are not necessarily meteorologists but still kind of want a taste of how to read models a way to forecast the weather and it's a great beginner tool and this is basically what it looks like okay and i'm going to show you in real time uh, what these actually look like and how you can actually use them but this is basically what it looks like so you can either get um, a graphical version of it or you can get more of a map view where there's actually numbers and locations that you can actually see and there's different times uh, different types of parameters that you can also use with different timestamps on them and it's actually in local time so you don't have to worry about z time or anything and actually it says you know like high temperature ending sunday january 8 2017 at 7 p.m. Eastern okay so it actually tells you okay and if you remember that's the video uh, where we talked about Moss where the high of the day was uh, was valid by 0z right this is basically the same thing it's just in local time so you don't have to worry about converting back and forth bet between Zulu time and local time so things are, 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 are really really simple okay so there's a lot of things that you can use with this tool um, and this would actually be one of them. Okay. So I just typed in K boss. Okay. Which is Boston, Massachusetts. Sorry. That's the station identifier for, for Boston. Um, and so here on the national weather service page, if you go to weather.gov and you type in whatever your zip code is or location is, it'll bring you to the current conditions at said location. But in this video, what I mainly want to concentrate on is how do you use the graphs and how do you use the uh, digital forecast output? Okay, so I'm just gonna click on the graph first. So first of all, you can just roll over and, and click it. And at the very, very top here, you can see uh, different things that are highlighted. So I can, I can click on temperature, right? I can click on temperature, click off temperature, whatever. And then I can actually hit submit, right? And these will go out for a 48 hour period starting and then you can actually, oops, you can actually change these parameters when you want the model to start from, okay? So if I'm looking at a 48 period starting at 4 p.m. on Sunday, July 23rd, 2017, and if I'm looking at uh, the red graph would be temperature, the green graph would be dew point, and then the orange would be the heat index. I can kind of see what temperature is doing as I go through the overnight and into the early hours um, on the next day, which would be Monday since today is Sunday. So here I'm just looking at temperatures kind of staying right around the 60 degree mark and they dip a little bit, you know, towards the low 60s. And, you know, you, it looks like by about, um, you know, uh, by about 3 p.m. tomorrow, you know, we're not really getting out of the mid 60s. Same thing for on Tuesday okay and also the day the days are broken up here here you can see here's Monday July 24th here's midnight this is all in local time and here would be Tuesday right here's midnight local time for Tuesday and that would be a 48 hour period 6 p.m. to almost 6 p.m. on Tuesday okay here you can see what the winds are doing all right now I haven't taught you how to read wind barbs yet okay but this will basically just show you where the wind is coming from okay so this would be the wind direction so these wind barbs show where the wind is coming from okay so here you can see you see these little tails on these wind barbs these little tails right here this indicates where the wind direction is coming from so if we look towards let's say 9 p.m and 3 AM kind of where this gray box is highlighted you can see that the winds are facing kind of a east south east direction okay because if we look at north east south and west these wind barbs are kind of going halfway between south and east so this would be maybe a east southeast wind direction okay and similarly if you look up over here you can kind of see how these wind barbs are coming out of the uh, northeast, okay? Because if up top is north and to the right is east, 
then these wind barbs are kind of splitting the difference between that. And then the numbers basically should show you in miles per hour, sea surface winds miles per hour. And if you were forecasting wind gusts, this is basically what it shows you here. So it looks like during uh, tomorrow, during the afternoon, Boston can get up to you know close to 30 mile an hour wind gusts during the afternoon coming out of the east. So not a really nice day for Boston tomorrow with temperatures only in the mid 60s and kind of kind of dreary, cloudy and uh, you know a little pretty breezy. So definitely definitely not the, the the best day in Boston, especially for July standards. In the next box, you can see relative humidity. You can look at precipitation potential. So how likely in a percentage you are to get precipitation and sky cover. Okay. So here you can see sky cover would be like 100%, 100%, 94%, 96%. And remember that we're really just going along the, the chart of time here. And the same thing for rain. Okay. So here on the y-axis, you have occasional um, likely chance and, and, and slight chance. Okay, so here, you know, it looks like it's pretty likely for rain um, for Boston for some kind of rain for tomorrow, but only, you know, six hundredths of an inch of precipitation through the overnight hours tonight through about 9 a.m. tomorrow. And then there's a better chance of rain um, for the afternoon hours. And this is predicting basically uh, almost three tenths of an inch of precipitation for tomorrow afternoon. So um, this basically is a decoded moss. Okay, this is an amateur's way of looking at moss, but I've already showed you how to read moss. Okay, and so you can basically look at either one of these and kind of use both tools to your advantage to figure out what the weather will be like for whatever location that you're actually forecasting for. All right. So this is basically almost like a decoded moss. Okay. And there's, like I said, there's different parameters that you can use and you can click off certain things. Let's say I only wanted to view temperature. So, you know, I can click off all these different parameters and hit submit, whatever. And it'll show me one graph. So if too many graphs at a time kind of, um, you know, tr trick your eyes a little bit, they'll do it to me sometimes. Um, you can just, uh, you know, click what what parameter you want to look at okay so that's basically how you use the graphical um the graphical um tool right so if we actually back click a little bit and i look at the digital forecast database this is a little bit more user friendly and if you're ever if you've ever watched uh the weather on tv this is a little bit more familiar okay so if I wanted to look at what the weather, let's say tomorrow, Monday is, I can just move a 12 hour period and it'll say today, tonight, Monday, Monday night, Tuesday, so on and so forth, right? I can look at the high and low temperatures. Okay. So here would be the high for Monday. Okay. Pretty cool. Only 68 in, in Boston. I'm a little bit warmer on the South coast. As you get into Northern New England a little bit, uh, definitely a lot cooler. This 46 is from Mount Washington. Okay, so if you're looking at you know 46 in July, that's ridiculous. That's because it's from Mount Washington. So don't let that trick you. All right. So a pretty cool pocket over New England for tomorrow for Monday. This is basically what this model is saying. And you can roll over these different icons, and it'll tell you in this weather parameter. It'll tell you actually what's going on. So for 8 a.m. for Boston, the weather looks like rain, as you can see. All right. If I can just have this stop for a second. Here, R minus would be light rain. RW would, with a minus sign would be light rain showers. The W indicates showers. So light rain would be a little bit more steady rain for Boston. So you can see the green. The green usually indicates rain. Um, when there's none here, okay, obviously, like if you go up into Maine, there's no weather really expected. The lighter green would kind of just indicate light rain, or maybe some drizzle. And so if you move your mouse over, you can kind of see how the weather changes throughout the uh, throughout the hours all right temperature works the same way okay 8 a.m 11 a.m 2 p.m 5 p.m okay so again this is almost like another decoded moss okay except in a more picture like view so if you don't like moss and if you don't like graphs this is another tool that you can actually use all right so 8 a.m 11 a.m 2 p.m 5 p.m okay these are basically all in zulu time once again so this would be 21z 18z 15z 12z so on and so forth but they just give it to you in local time so again you don't have to convert between um between zulu time and local time uh 
wind gusts, wind, wind direction, wind speed. Here are those wind barbs again. So here the wind would be coming out of the east. Okay, and it tells you what the wind speed is. So 13, uh, these are in knots. So 13 knots, 10 knots here, wind speed, knots in direction for Monday, July 24th, 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So this would be, you know, from the east, 13, 10, 15 knots on Nantucket, so on and so forth. Sky cover, you can see this. these are in percentages, so 97% covered. This would be a totally overcast day. And if you didn't really know that, you can kind of just look at the gray, and gray would indicate a lot of cloud cover. The blue is, you know, not so much. And the key is kind of up here, too. So the bluer things are along with the percentages. So this would be 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, and so on. So the grayer the area is, the more cloud cover you have. Same thing for the amount of precipitation, that QPF, okay? That how much liquid equivalent did we um, did we get on the ground? So how much did it rain or how much did it snow? And if we were to, if it, this was snow, we would have to melt that snow down to see how much water actually fell out of the sky. But for right now, it's July and we don't have to worry about snow, thank God. So um, if we click on QPF, this is a 12 hour thing. So, um, here for 12 hours for, let's say Providence, Rhode Island in a 12 hour period ending Monday, July 24th at 2 PM. Okay. And so over six hours, this would be, you know, uh, basically from about noon time to, uh, um, not noon time from about 7 AM or 8 a.m. on Monday till about ending at 2 p.m. on Monday in that six hour period. It looks like, uh, you know, Boston's going to get um, 0.2 inches of, uh, of liquid rain, or I should say liquid equivalent, which is rain in this case. Um, 0.34 inches on Nantucket, Providence is 0.28 inches, so on and so forth. So, you know, you can look at this, right? And let's say, you know, what, what was the total amount of precip for the entire day? Well, you can just highlight over the other QPF box, okay? And this would be ending at 8 p.m. So this would be the next six hours. So in six hours, again, you can look, Boston has um, received, you know, 0.21 inches of QPF. Providence is about um, 0.12. Nantucket's 0.19. Hartford's 0.06, so on and so forth. So you could basically just add those up and get the total rain for the entire day. So for that entire 12 hour period, you know, let's say Boston for the first six hours, Boston got 0.2 inches of rain. And then the next six hours, Boston got 0.21 inches of rain. So for the entire day, this model is basically indicating that, you know, Boston's going to get close to half an inch of rain during a 12 hour time span for tomorrow, okay? So that's basically how you use these um, these little National Weather Service tools. They're really, really great in helping you figure out what your forecast will be or what it might look like, especially since you're just starting off and you're just learning how to use um, the actual uh, models that meteorologists use every single day.